Hello once again, my mathematical television audience. YouTube vision, I suppose. I don't know. Oh, ooh, pardon me. Didn't mean to bump you, audience. You're an entire audience, and I bumped you. That's pretty amazing. Pretty impressive, if you ask me. Okay, in today's lesson, we are going to find the behavior of a graph near a zero. <laughs> Maybe I should say of a graph. Of a graph. Doop. That's how you do that, right? <laughs> this is math, not English. Okay, anyways. So say we are given a polynomial function. Yes, we are talking about polynomial functions still. And <laughs> we're finding out how to graph them piece by piece. And today we are taking the piece of being near a zero, AKA X intercept, which hopefully you learned about in another video that I made. <laughs> Not somebody else's video, my video. Yeah, okay, now you can watch other people's videos, it's all right. Okay, so, say we have the polynomial function, uh, function of x equals x squared times x minus two. Okay, first thing we need to do is find the zeros. So, given what we've uh, learned already, the zeros are the x-intercepts, and they're where uh, y, or a function of x, equals zero, the whole thing equals zero. So we have, um, if we want to set the whole thing equal to zero, then we put zero here for the x squared, then zero squared is zero, times x minus two will equal zero, so that's good, that's a good one. Okay, and then x minus two, we wanna set this whole thing equal to zero, so what minus two is zero? Well, two minus two is zero. Easy beans. Okay, so we also can remember from, uh, well, when was it? <laughs> one of the last, well, anyways, one of the last videos, uh, multiplicities, and if you have an even multiplicity, the graph will touch the x-axis, and if you have an odd multiplicity, the graph will cross the x-axis. So the zero, zero has a multiplicity Ooh, something finished over there. Multiplicity of two. And the zero two has a multiplicity of one. Okay, odd multiplicity, it's gonna cross. Even multiplicity, it is going to touch the x-axis. So that's some good useful information, right? So we have our x-intercepts. Here's one at zero, zero, and here's one at two, zero. So we know that uh, with the even multiplicity, it's going to touch, and the odd multiplicity, it's gonna cross. So, wait a second, we have a problem here. We don't know, look at this, there, you could have it touch on this side or that side, or you could have it cross on this side or that side. What are we gonna do? Well, what we need to do is find the behavior near a zero. So, how we do this is we test it algebraically. So, for each uh, zero, we plug it in, plug it in. Just like a product, which I probably shouldn't say for fear of being sued. Okay, so what we do is we have our equation here and we have the number that we're gonna plug in. There's one thing though, we do not plug it into the number that it actually represents, if that makes any sense. So the number that it represents, this x, this x is gonna be zero. Any other x in the equation, whoops, and I just messed that up, any other x in the equation we're gonna replace with zero. <laughs> so you can see that, okay. So now we have zero minus two times x squared. And we end up with negative two x squared. So what this tells us is that near zero, near the zero, zero, or x-intercept zero, uh, the graph behaves like y equals negative two x squared, okay? So, let's have our little graph here. Isn't that just a nice graph? Okay, this tells us that it opens downward, which is great 
because we didn't know that before. And because we know it's a negative 2x squared, it's going to be stretched. So it's not, so if, uh, if the graph were to continue going as negative 2x squared, which it doesn't, it would go out here. But all we need to know is near the x-intercept, it's like this. <laughs> That's all we need to know, basically, is that it's on this side, because we're making a really kind of loose graph. All right, we're going to go with the Christmas colors again and find the behavior of the graph near the other zero, which is 2. That is bright and vivid, kind of like a double rainbow. Okay, so take the same principle. We plug it in to the x that it is not the zero of. So we have 2 squared times x. So we leave that as x minus 2. The x that it is the 0 of, we leave as x. OK, so now we have 4 times x minus 2. And that can be further simplified to 4x minus 8. What do you know? That looks like a linear function. So what this tells us is near uh, 2, near the 0, 2, y equals, y behaves like y equals, well, the graph behaves like y equals 4x minus 8. And we know that because it's not negative, it's positive, it's going to go upwards. So we go 1. 2, okay? And it's going to go up with a slope of 4. The y-intercept for this would be negative 8 way down here, but we know that it intersects at 2, so we can just go um, one, 1 over and 4 down, and that'll give us just basically what the slope is like right here. And so we can take that, we take these two points, and we can connect them together with a smooth continuous line because this is a polynomial function and that is one of their characteristics, smooth, continuous lines. And that is all for this lesson, and you'll have to stay tuned to find out what happens with the end behavior. So, yes.